Hello everyone, this is Gauran Graje and in this video we'll be looking at the schematic for a PAMP integrator. So I'll be using LTSPICE software to simulate the frequency response like this which includes the magnitude plot as well as the phase plot and simulate the output waveforms for a number of different input signals such as a sinusoidal signal, a square wave signal and a triangular wave input signal. So let's get started. So in LTSPICE, I have created the schematic for the integrator circuit. Now, for our frequency response or AC sweep analysis, we first need to change the sinusoidal signal to an AC sweep signal. For this, we'll delete these usual parameters and hide this information. Instead of that, we'll add the AC amplitude as 1 and make this information visible on the schematic. This comes under the small signal parameters. Next for the AC analysis, we'll go to the analysis CMD and under AC analysis, we'll select decade, thousand points per decade. The start frequency will be 1 hertz and the stop frequency will be 100 kilohertz. Now if we run this simulation, and probe the output, we'll get a waveform like this. Here we can also have the grid, and as we can see that the x-axis is logarithmic scale. To make only one of these visible at a time, we can go to one of the y-axis. So for example, on the right hand side, we have the y-axis for degrees. Right click on it and then we can choose the don't plot the phase option. Here we'll have only the magnitude plot visible. Similarly, we can make it reappear by right clicking and clicking on auto and making the magnitude plot disappear. Here on the magnitude plot, we can see that the gain is almost constant for the lower frequencies and then it starts dropping off. The point at which the gain becomes minus 3 dB of its max value is approximately this point where the gain value is 17.283 dB. It is found to be at the 1 kHz frequency. This frequency becomes the corner frequency Fa. The frequency Fb is found at the unity gain point so at 0 dB, the frequency is 10 kHz. So this is our FB point and 10 kHz becomes the FB. These frequencies can be set for by our calculations. So if we want the FA frequency to be 1 kHz and FB to be 10 times of FA, first we'll set the value for the feedback capacitor and then using the value of the FA frequency which was given, we can calculate the value of the feedback resistance. Then using the relation between between FB and FA, we can calculate the value of the R1 resistance, which is 2.2K. From these two values, we can also calculate ROM. In the schematic, however, we can skip the ROM since the simulation uses ideal values and does not require offset removal. Now to simulate the output for a normal sine wave input, we can set the parameters for the sinusoidal input component normally, such as the DC offset as 0, amplitude as 1 volt and frequency frequency as 1 kilohertz. Here we can run the transient analysis. So in the analysis CMD, we'll choose the transient option and set the stop time as 3 milliseconds. By running this simulation and probing the input as well as the output, we'll get this graph. Here with the grid, we can see that the output in blue achieves its peak approximately when the input signal becomes zero. So this makes the output a cosine wave. Also, we can see that the cosine wave is inverted, so it is the negative cosine wave. This is basically the result of the integrator operation. The integrator gives the output as a negative integral of the input signal. Here we can also see the distortion at the beginning of the output signal. This is due to the charging of the capacitor. Now for the square wave input, we set our input source with these values. So this will create a square wave that oscillates between voltage levels minus 1 and 1 with a total frequency of 1 kilohertz. If we run the simulation for 12 milliseconds, we'll get this output. 
Here we can see that when the input voltage in green is on a constant positive value, we get a negative downward slope of the output and when the input has a constant negative value, we get a positive upward slope of the output. Finally, for our triangular wave input, we set our sinusoidal voltage component in the pulse mode with these parameters. Running the simulation for transient analysis of 12 milliseconds gives us this output. Here too we can verify the negative integral operation by seeing that when the input voltage has a positive upward slope, suppose an upward slope of y equals x, we get an output a minus x square curve which goes downward. Similarly, when we have y equals minus x, we get a positive upward slope of x square. Finally, we can also conclude that the steep drop off of gain in the frequency response is due to the capacitor in the feedback loop. By adding more capacitors in parallel, we can make the drop steeper, making it a perfect low pass filter. The values of FA and FB can also be modulated by changing the RF and R1 resistances. So, this has been a quick look at the integrator circuit schematic and simulation in LT Spice. Thanks for watching.